Let me tell you guys a little story. What I have in front of me is all of the pieces that I need to assemble an electric guitar, more specifically a Stratocaster. I didn't design this, I'm gonna leave a link to the person who did below. So, like a lot of people, in my late teens I decided that the most important skill in life is to learn how to play guitar. And so I went ahead and spent all my time learning how to play guitar. Now, it's still pretty cool actually, I like being able to play guitar. I'm not so much of an electric guitar player, but the reason that I have this guitar in front of me is because the real problem with knowing how to play guitar is unless you're really good at playing guitar, there's no reason for you to play anywhere except for your living room. And so there's really no good excuse to go into public places and show off this newfound ability to play guitar. And so I have come up with a plan. You see, I fit in that category of okay, but not very good. But I'd really like to show off my ability to play guitar. So what I've decided to do is 3D print a guitar and bring it with me to Indiana. Now, if you have no idea why I'm bringing up Indiana, it's because you haven't been there and there is MRF or Midwest Brit Festival. If you're not familiar with it, it's a 3D printing convention that a whole bunch of people show up to and it's a really fun time. And I needed an excuse to bring a guitar. And the best excuse I could come up with was to 3D print one. You see, it's a 3D printing festival and if I 3D... So the entire plan is to 3D print a guitar, uh, glue it together, see if I can make it work, and then bring it to Murph. So let's get to scraping these edges off of these pieces and glue this stuff together. You may not know this, but there's a problem inherent to 3D printing when it comes to stuff with sharp corners. When the 3D printer's nozzle is coming up along this edge and it needs to turn and go this way, it's not actually possible for it to stop instantaneously and turn in this direction. It stops at this corner, there's a likelihood that it's going to go past the end of the corner. And that's what I'm fixing here, is that even though this is really flat edges on all of these parts, there is still bumps on all of the corners, and that's just really common with 3D printed stuff. And so I'm cleaning those up so that when I try to glue this stuff together, like so, so that it's full contact along the whole side rather than just the edges. Now it's time to glue them together. And for that, I've got a little trick up my sleeve. You see, a while ago, a company by the name of, I think they're called 3D Glue, uh, sent me this uh, glue, basically. It's, it's uh, meant to glue PLA parts together. They have some for ABS too. Uh, and you could also use it for build plate adhesion. But they sent this to me free of charge and told me to try it out. I never did until now. So I'm doing it now. So we're gonna try to use this to glue these parts together. All right, so we took a little break there and I took some time to read the official instructions for 3D glue. Now what they suggest is that you sand down the surfaces, which makes a lot of sense. And so I went ahead and did that. So the other thing is, is that it spe very specifically says, do not get this on your hands. So I actually invested in some gloves, now don't judge. It says don't get it on your hands. Now I know a lot of the time it's like don't get it on your hands even though it isn't really bad. This stuff has a lot of warnings on it. I, I'm not gonna take my chances. All right, we got gloves, we got safety glasses, and it's time to glue this stuff together. This is gonna fun. Let's not start with the most structural stuff first. Let's start with the, uh, the stuff that isn't such a big deal. So this is the very back of the guitar. This is where the bridge mounts, where the strings attach to. So this is gonna be the weakest, or could be the weakest part of the guitar and it won't really hurt as much. So I'm gonna to try to glue these two parts together. First, I'm gonna make sure that they line up, and they do. And since I sanded them down, they, they fit really nicely together. I could feel that, that they have nice mating surfaces on them. So I believe all I need to do is set them on this table, which hopefully isn't also PLA, and glue them together. So let's give it a try. Should I make sure this stuff doesn't glue stuff to the table? Yeah, I 
guess I have to test that, don't I? Ah. Okay, I lost my mic. We were gonna make sure that this doesn't glue stuff to the table first. This is the weirdest thing I've ever done. <laughs> okay, so. And I'm just gonna hold it together as long as I can and put pressure on it. Make sure I keep it aligned. seems to be attached. I got my answer, no, this glue does not stick to the table. That's good, that's really good. Okay, so we glued the back side of the body together. We've got that. The glue's gonna have to set for, I guess, 30 minutes. So we'll do the next section while we're waiting. Somebody didn't sand this part down. I should probably do that, huh? Okay, so that should go together just like so. So let's apply our glue to there. So much for the gloves, huh? Okay. So this part is now together and setting. And I guess I should probably get a new pair of gloves. I think putting gloves onto previous degloved hands is gonna be challenging. How do doctors do this? All right, <laughs> we got new gloves. Now it's time to glue together the very back, which is where the guitar body attaches to the neck. I think that's pretty much set. That's close enough for the girls we go out with. Okay, so this, I believe is set enough. Mm, nope. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, <laughs> there we go. Wow, what are the chances that that's like sliced perfectly so that both these surfaces are Showing. This is starting to look a lot worse than I thought it would. It's just covered in glue. I'm hoping that the glue cleans up easily. It'll look a lot better when it's not covered in glue. I might even end up painting this thing, maybe sanding it down and painting it to make it look really nice. Not really sure yet though. I think I should just finish this up and glue it together. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Okay, we're gonna go for the last glue. <laughs> you know, I should have sanded this edge because it's not straight. Well, I can see some light through it. But not everywhere. So inside here is where the pickups go and no one's ever gonna see this part of the guitar. So I can use this to let some 3D gloop sink in and uh, better deal with this seam. Today's episode was brought to you by Custom Plasma Creations. Have an idea for a product or decoration that you would like cut out of a sheet of steel? Maybe you want a giant powder coated gear or a custom bumper for your pickup truck. 
Send us an email with your idea and we'll help you make it real. Or you could check out our website at customplasmacreations.com. Well, I think that the glue is finally done setting and I've let this set overnight. So that means that it's day two, hour zero. Oh, well, <laughs> that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. That already fits nicely. This audio jack needs to go in this hole right here and it doesn't quite sit flat. And yeah, sure does, it fits all the way in. Now we'll see if the bridge fits and after that we will get the pick guard in and we'll go from there. In case you were wondering, this is the donor guitar. This is actually the first guitar I ever bought. I paid 50 bucks for it. And I would have used the electronics and the pick guard off of this one. They would have fit, but they don't work. So I wasn't about to go and spend a bunch of time diagnosing electronics issues with stuff that I don't understand. So I was able to get this pick guard off of Amazon for 40 bucks is a pretty good deal. Okay, so three springs on this wire, that thing, and this, like that. Hmm, that's kind of shitty. Seems as though the holes that they left in the plastic for these uh, six screws are spaced just slightly differently than I need them to be. So that means that I'm gonna have to pre-drill my own holes so I don't split the body in half. Cause these screws go directly into a seam between this part and this part, which means that there is some pretty thick plastic there that uh, might actually cause it to break if I just decided to shove the screws in. For as much fun as I'm having, uh, we still have to finish with the bridge. So what I haven't done is the back of this bridge is floating, right? So what goes inside here is these three springs hook onto this thing and pull it. Um, and basically that uh, kind of leaves it floating a little bit so it can move so that when you put your whammy bar into here, you can bend this and kind of spring the whole thing forward, which will lower the pitch of all the, all the strings. So these three springs need to go in here with this bracket and then we can continue to have fun. All right, there's not a whole lot left now. Uh, I think, well, we have to pull those two strings back off and then we can put the pick guard in and then we have to solder four wires, I believe, uh, three actually. Uh, two of them go to the uh, connection and then one of them needs to go to the metal parts of the guitar and back. So yeah, we'll do that quick and uh, see if it works, I guess. So I'll admit I cheated a little bit and while the camera was offloading the last clip, I decided to put in the pick guard and the audio jack and I soldered up three wires I haven't managed to put the back plate in yet, but I also put the strings on and I kind of put it together by myself. So I haven't heard what this sounds like yet. And I've got this cord. Since I don't have an amplifier, I'm going to try to use an old Bluetooth speaker and see if I can hear this thing work for the first time. So let's give this a try. I'm really curious. This will be my very first time him hearing this guitar. Yeah. Okay, so it's not very loud because this speaker is not designed to be hooked directly up to a guitar, but it is working. And it's also horribly out of tune. So 
the next thing that we're going to have to do is tune this guitar. So when I tune this guitar, this could actually get kind of ugly. I, I feel like if it's going to break, it's going to break when I tune it. Now you heard me playing it and I tuned it relative to itself. It's, it might even be a full step down. The strings aren't as tight as I think they need to get for it to be completely in tune. So I'm going to tune this and I'm going to let you guys watch me tuning it because if it does break, that's when it's going to break. So let's go and do that. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now, if only I had a way to do distortion. Oh, I do. <laughs> I have a plan. I happen to have a Mac computer and a Mac computer is they come with GarageBand and I have a thing that I can plug the guitar into the computer and uh, play music into the computer to which I can record it there. And then I have like almost every single guitar sound effect in the world. Not really, but like, there's so many of them. Alright, so let's talk about this. There are a few problems that are pretty obvious right off the hop. The first one is that the strings are way too close to the frets down here. Now, I believe the way that you fix that is to adjust the truss rod because I've got plenty of space here. Either that or I'll space off the what they call the nut, which is where the strings come through here. If I spaced that out this way, then I wouldn't have such trouble with the strings hitting the frets. The other issue that I actually can't prove, but, well, maybe I can, is that this intonation is probably wrong. You see, on this guitar, this uh, biggest string here is called the low E string, and when you play the string open, it should be playing an E, and when you play it at the 12th fret, it should also play the same note, but one octave higher. And I'd be willing to bet that since I changed the body of this guitar, that my intonation is going to be set wrong and I adjust that by adjusting the overall length of the string so even though I could tune the string by adjusting the tension of it I can't tune this note without adjusting the length of the string so uh, that takes actually a lot of effort I'll have to use my tuner and see yeah well this guitar already went out of tune alright so that's in tune and that's high but it's close um, so yeah, the intonation on this will need to be set, but I'll do that on my own. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching.